Session 4b, external effects of homophobia on lesbian, gay and bisexual people. Most of the statistics in this section are taken from my research with young LGBT people conducted over a 13 year period in Colgedale. The age for many gay young people coming out is dropping. As can be seen from the slide, in my original research of 1998, the average age for coming out was 17.2 years, whereas by 2010-11, this has dropped to 14.25. It seems likely to me that the age for coming out will continue to drop. On the one hand, this can be seen as a positive thing, in that the highly vulnerable period between identifying and coming out is being shortened. On the other hand, this also means that young people are coming out at a time when there is the most pressure, in particular from peers, to conform. The younger they are, the less likely they are to be out to their parents. At the same time, they are at school where homophobic abuse is far, far worse now than it's ever been. When I was at school back in the 50s, early 60s, there was very little bullying. I went to a secondary modern school for girls and we were all terrified of the headmistress. Nowadays, however, bullying is rife in schools right across Britain and in many other parts of the world. The word gay, which we took on as a positive way of describing homosexuality, meaning good as you, is now a common word used as a put down for anything that is bad. Because of the visibility of LGBTs, particularly in the media, Many young people are identifying and coming out whilst they are still at school. If you know you are LGBT, then witnessing or experiencing homophobic or transphobic abuse is significantly more painful and damaging. As can be seen from this slide, there is a consistency in the number of young people experiencing homophobic abuse. Of course, we have to be careful because the numbers are so small. But we know from the recent Youth Chances survey of over 7,000 young LGBTQ young people in England that 63% had experienced name calling in comparison to 31% of heterosexuals and 18% have been physically attacked compared with 7% of heterosexuals. Witnessing homophobic abuse is also psychologically damaging and as you can see if anything there may have been a rise in the number of LGBT young people witnessing this. It seems likely that more gay young people are either truanting or dropping out of school, whilst there appears to be little support from teachers. This is confirmed by another survey conducted with 1,700 teachers by the National Foundation for Educational Research. They conducted a teacher voice omnibus survey in February 2010. The same study found that few schools were promoting respect for LGBT pupils, which is borne out by my research. This consistency shows there is little positive information about being gay in schools in Calderdale. Homophobic abuse doesn't just happen in school, it also happens elsewhere, and it's often the same people who are doing it. The data from Calderdale is fairly consistent in the number of young people who have witnessed or experienced homophobic hate incidents outside of schools. These findings are supported by other research. So a significant number of LGBT young people are both witnessing and experiencing homophobic abuse at school, outside of school, and as this next slide shows, some are also experiencing it at home. Over half of the young people I've interviewed have received negative responses from parents when they came out to them. Mothers appear to be worse than fathers. Again, this has been borne out by the Youth Chances findings. In fact, a proportion of young LGBTs are either made homeless by their parents kicking them out of home when they've come out, or they leave home because of the homophobia of their parents. Between a quarter and a third of all homeless young people are LGBT. Isolation is, alongside parental rejection, religion, 
and homophobic bullying, one of the most significant external factors. Young gay people usually think that they're the only one when they first come out. They might have seen images of gays in the media, but there are very few images of gay teenagers. Young LGBTs feel isolated from society, from their families and from their friends. Very few have a gay youth group where, where young people can go and meet other similar youth. In fact, the recent Youth Chances Providers survey received only 46 responses from agencies across England who provided services specifically for LGBT young people. Many gay youth groups have been forced to close due to lack of funding. Indeed, after running Gay and Lesbian Youth in Calderdale for 13 years, we had to close it in 2011. Each year we would carry out an evaluation of members attending the youth group. Here are the responses from the last survey we did. 81% said they felt less isolated since attending Gallic. 55% said they felt less depressed. 84% said their confidence had increased. 100% said they had a more positive LGBT identity. And 90% said that Gallic had improved their self-esteem. Providing a space where LGBT young people can be themselves, feel safe and have support from adults and peers, where they can have a more normal adolescence, is critical in challenging their isolation. The most vociferous homophobic people usually belong to a fundamentalist religion. Whilst LGBT people and our allies have fought to remove homophobic and transphobic legislation and replace it with anti-discriminatory legislation, the main opponents of this change have been people with religious beliefs beliefs which say that homosexuality is a sin. They purport that homosexuality is chosen and can be changed with help from Christian conversion therapy. Not only is there no evidence that this works, but on the contrary, there is plenty of evidence that it makes the victim more vulnerable to suicide. Indeed, in 2010, the British Medical Association publicly rejected conversion therapy, and there is currently a debate in Parliament to try and make it illegal. At the moment, however, there are still people practising this highly dangerous therapy. I'd like to conclude this section by showing you a clipping from an interview I made some time ago with a young gay man called Gareth who used to attend the Gallic Youth Group. Gareth talks about the horrendous bullying he experienced at three different schools in Calderdale. When this is finished, I'd like you to go back to the description of Session 4 and click on two further videos which you can access via YouTube. The first one is from a film For the Bible Tells Me So, and it gives a very painful and moving story told by the mother of a young lesbian who killed herself. When Mary Lou Walner found out about her daughter being a lesbian, she told her some very nasty things based on her beliefs. Anna Louise, her daughter, could not forgive her mother and later killed herself. After years of research, Mary Lou realised that the church was wrong to teach her that homosexuality was a choice. She and her husband now campaign against religious homophobia. The second video is about another mother whose 14-year-old son, Aidan, killed himself in 2013. He was being bullied at a school in Essex and the school did little to stop the bullying. So Gareth, you were telling me about how old you were when you first came out, came out. but you first realised you were gay, how old were you? I was 11 years old. And my, the gay vibe started at I went on my first day at school getting called queer, fag, fatty boy. So my, my first day at school were really, really bad. I went on crying on the first day. And then it kind of calmed down for a couple of days and then it started again. So my, my first day at school and it was just really bad and it got that bad that I had to change school three times since I was at high school so that's why I got like no GCSEs and I started with me and Colin then I got beat up, got my head flushed down the toilet 
got broken bones because of the bullies and it was like a really bad like school time for me. How did you how did your mum react? And my mum asked I didn't I wasn't out at, to my mum at this time so she just said what happened and I just said oh I fell and she went oh alright then. So, so like my mum None of my family knew what I would get at this time, so... Your, your, your coming out process? Uh, how do you mean? Well, did, did... When they were bullying you, did you know that you were gay? Yeah. You did? Yeah. But, but because of the bullying, did that make you scared to tell anybody? Yeah, I, I was scared to come out. And I, I did want to come out, but I didn't want to come out, because if I did come out, then you say, oh, they'll fight. Beat you up even more. I was, I was in the closet and uh, I think I was 14 and I came out to a school friend, well, all, all my group friends, and they were fine with it. But then I got broken bones and had to move school again. And it was fine at the last school, I did it was fine for a couple of days. And then it started all over again with getting called queer, fag, puff, bye bye. and getting beat up, head flushed down the toilet again, so I ended up leaving school at 15 with no GCSEs.